Hey everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flater Mouse. Today we have another design by Evan Perry of Texas, and he calls these the Mini Bissell Missiles. Now these are constructed out of a commutator, out of an electric motor, vacuum cleaner, get it, Bissell Missiles. Now these are really similar to a design he sent about a year ago, also called the Bissell Missiles. Uh, I think they look really steampunk looking. Maybe that's just me. Evan put a lot of work into these. I don't think he has a lathe. I think he does this all by hand, believe it or not. And when Evan's not designing odd projectiles for us, he's uh, selling jewelry that he creates on Etsy. Check out the link in the description. Now in this test, we're going to do things a little bit different. We're going to propel some at subsonic speeds and some at about Mach 2. Let's get out to the test facility and see how these things perform. Okay, I'm ready. 15 yards, aluminum plate. Alright, here we go. In this first test, which was very low speed, you could see the Bissell missile just puttering along. There is a little bit of a spin. These were propelled through a rifle choke. We see excellent stability. It just shot a little bit high, which is, as you know, is common for very lightweight projectiles. The aluminum plate is just a little bit thicker than one inch. Very, very difficult for most projectiles to go through. Okay, we got an error on that one, unfortunately. Now even though we did not get a chronograph reading from further tests, we know that this is traveling around 2300 feet per second. And just like the first shot, it went a little bit high. Now most of our viewers have very keen vision and they probably noticed the steel core or the shaft part of the commutator flying over the target. Now because we propelled these at such a high velocity, that steel core slipped out of the back of the Bissell missile and which launched separately. Yeah, like the little steel shaft, yeah, the core one, or whatever. Okay. Didn't. They were close to both of the high, but. Yeah, windage was good, but both of them were shooting high. Even the, this is a low power, this is a high power. Okay, okay. Kentucky windage didn't work for me today. <laughs> Pretty close though. Better than, I mean, if you went any higher, you would have missed. Well, it's just California windage. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it don't blow. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, I'm ready. Take two. Where'd that one hit? It looked like it clipped the right corner. Oh, gosh. Now in this test, the only thing that went right was Danny was able to hit the lead plate at all. The green Sabo wad is all torn apart, indicating that I had very poor support of the projectile in the shot cup. Now of course, during these tests, we have no idea what's really going on. We have to kind of guess and look at the damage on the plate to determine what happened. Explain what happened. Uh, evidently the thing came apart. Um... It's got a little steel center core. The it's shaft, basically, of the, the commutator shaft. shaft. Yeah, shaft of the com What he said. Yeah. Uh, came apart. The little shaft or pin, whatever you want to call it, hit sideways here. You can see the contour in the bottom where it hit. And then the uh, major body of the commutator hit right here sideways. Okay. So it uh, came apart in flight. I am ready. High power. Wow. 2292 feet per second, folks. In this test, we used a smooth bore barrel, no rifling, so we had no spin, yet it was incredibly stable and accurate. 
Again, we lost the steel pin, meaning we lost half to one third of the overall weight. Yet look at the damage. It looked like a rifle hit that. Now this will tell us a lot. That's a small target at 10 yards with a steampunk slug. Okay, I'm ready. All right, we're gonna try for the screen. Oh, no problem. No problem. Well, I think we're seeing a trend here. Again, we had separation of the core and the main body. The main body just zipped right past, tumbling along. And here comes the steel core to save the day. It's amazing that he hit it with anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm just blown away at that. Now the steel core is probably traveling around 1800 feet per second or so, if I was to guess. But look at the damage it did. It's just spitting out little pieces all over the place. Almost forgot about the ballistic gel. He, he actually wanted to make sure that we use the on ballistic gel. I almost forgot it. <laughs> Cast, recast it just for. After all that work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I recast it just for him. And I'm a little better at casting it. Not great. Okay, let's hope this one holds together. Are you ready? I'm ready. See where each one of the pedals on that commutator went in. Yeah, yeah. Blue. What a mess. Those did not, that one came apart again. There's a hole. See that? That was the hollow. He pulled out that little wad there That because it was hollow because the, the, the steel shaft came apart again. But it did hit the target or hit the gel. Yeah, yeah. It followed and <laughs> it did a little. DC. Uh, Piece of, oh look at that, look at that, it just, all that, um, the commutator copper parts. Just fragmented, that's nasty. And then, gosh, I'm, I'm getting a little better at the, the gel, folks. Um, still, I still suck at it. <laughs> just not getting good. a weird reflection off of it. Just not good with CDs. Yeah, that's another story. But anyway, <laughs> the steel core, you can see how it went down. Hopefully you can see that. Went down and then whoop! <laughs> and it went out the back, hit our vest, and we found the steel pin on the ground. Victim of inertia knocking it loose from the rest of it sometimes it worked sometimes it did that sometimes it didn't it actually bounced off the board okay look at that it went down bounced curved back up and came out funny funniest wound track i've ever seen because it was going down like 45 degrees and boop, boop. <laughs> it didn't bounce back up but it just had enough energy to just go all the way through the gel evan perry of texas with his this crazy, you know, <laughs> home crafted stuff that yeah, it usually works. I mean, yep. enough of them worked that it was, uh, I'd call it a win, and a few of them came apart. Probably because we, I pushed them way too hard. Twenty three hundred feet per second is uh, <laughs> maybe asking a little too much for these. Live and learn. It's like oh, do another bad idea from Jeff. <laughs> Push them too hard. Well, there you go. Thank you for your help, Danny. We're out here sweating and... Oh, we have showed you its features. No, you're right. Let's do it the dumbest way. It, that's kind of my motto there. <laughs> <laughs> now, once again, yeah, we can blame Jeff on this one. <laughs> uh, we had separation of the core and the main body. But we can still imagine what would happen if it didn't separate. Yeah, the outer part would have just exploded like that and the core would have continued straight through like that. And it would have done that at a higher velocity. But I gotta say, that slug absolutely wrecked the ballistic gel.
Okay, back to the low power one. That's better, more promising. At least to hit it. <laughs> the Corona target. Don't think I'm not gonna use that too. It's not going to waste. Maybe it's pre-punched for ranger wiping. <laughs> Look at that. That one was 1183. That might be the, the velocity they're supposed to be going at. You're supposed to take these off one sheet at a time before you use them. <laughs> Don't think I'm not going to use that, man. I'm telling you. Look at that clean entry hole, though. Just like a paper punch. Yeah. That always blows my mind. Always blows my mind how clean of a hole that makes. It's velocity. And those weren't even the high velocity ones. No. That's awesome. Now this is what happens when everything works properly. We didn't tear up the Sabo, we have good stability, and we have good accuracy. And just like our sponsor Nerd VPN, you need good accuracy too. And if you ever wonder why I don't do sponsored videos, it's because it's always some third party uh, dude asking you if you want to do these sponsorships. You don't know if they're really from the company or not and you have to send them all your sensitive tax information, personal information. Do you really want to trust some stranger with that? I say no. So I want to thank you for watching and our wonderful Patreon supporters for keeping this channel alive. We'll see you next time, folks. They'll never notice.